Hi guys, charity shop gold or garbage. Just the one item here. Pick this up in Kingswood in Bristol. Uh, Salvation Army, I think this one came in. That looks like 65 pence to me, but they decided it was 55 pence. I wasn't going to argue, I was quite happy with that. It says 27 megahertz on the back. Scientific Toys Limited. Nice little battery box. Doesn't look corroded at all. Oh, pretty lights. Oh, that one says 27 megahertz. <laughs> okay, that one says 27 megahertz, but not a lot happening. Well, I've done my usual. I've tried it with all my spare transmitters. These are all 27 megahertz because it says 27 megahertz on the back. None of them talk to it. So either it's just a different um, receiver chip in there that doesn't understand any of these transmitters or it's faulty. So I guess I could just take it apart and have a quick look inside, make sure there's nothing silly like the aerial lead has come loose. Because it's unusual for me to get nothing to talk to them. see inside. That's, we'll call that the top. Obviously it's reversible. Works both ways up. That's the antenna which is a bit of uh, sticky backed copper. This is the steering which just slops around so it goes at a different angle and it goes backwards. Let's take that off. Give us a bit more space. On this side, we've got a weight that goes up and down, detects when the car is upside down, and I reckon that reverses the motor. lifts out all right. There we go, so it's a changeover switch. So the wires from the receiver go into the switch and then to the motor. So reversing that would reverse motor. So that means it keeps going forwards when it turns over. On this side we have the receiver. So that's the on-off switch, yeah. That's a little demo um, lead plugs in there I think. So what happens if we short that out? Nothing. That's interesting. I would have thought 
that would have done something shorting that out. It's quite often they have a little lead going to the outside of the display case so you can press a button. So if that does nothing, yeah, that surprises me, I thought it would have. Nice gearbox, nice reasonable size motor in there. While we've got the receiver out where we can see it, I'll just zoom in and see what the numbers are on the receiver chip. Well, I've spent a lot of time fussing around with this now. I think it's just a matter of that receiver chip is not compatible with any of my transmitters. Initially I thought there might have been a problem with the motor, but there isn't. If I I've got this set to 10 amp scale and if I go straight across the feed to the motor from the receiver we've got about 300 milliamps running or 280 and if I move that switch the other way so it thinks it's upside down I should be able to go on the other lead. Yep, there we go. So, so, it's either the receiver chip is not compatible with any of my transmitters, or there may be a fault on there somewhere, but I can't measure any output from either of those two leads there, which is the motor feed leads, if I use any of my transmitters. Stuck really, but we've got a nice gearbox, nice motor, nice battery pack, a couple of handy switches I suppose but the receiver doesn't want to know what I'm talking about. Oh, we've got some pretty flashing LEDs as well. Because those are multiple colour LEDs, or dual colour anyway. Orange and green. There's only two leads going to them. So they're colour changing LEDs. Right. Put it back together I suppose. Well there we are, back together. Although to be honest I'm not sure why I bothered putting it back together. If none of my transmitters speak to it and only costing me 55 pence it'd be better off taking apart for the pieces, components. So that's a nice motor in there with gearbox um, and a nice set of flashing LEDs and a nice little battery box. So I think that'll probably go into my junk pile to be used as component parts.